All right, guys, in this video, we're going to continue on with the Centon 6S restoration video. And this is number two in the series, and this one is the build. So as you can see, we're ready to go here. And we're going to go ahead and get on with the build on this one. And in the previous video, we went over what we got when we bought this kit from eBay and what we had to purchase to get things together and running. And the tires did show up. So we have the tires and everything. Everything we need to build it should be here. So we're going to go ahead and deal with that. Now, I did peek at the differentials and the chassis came with the two differentials, front and rear, were both hot racing diffs. So the Arma diffs weren't in there, but I did check them out and they're in great shape. Bearings are good. The shimming was right. So we're going to go ahead and run with the ones that are in it. We're not going to mess with those. I'd already checked out the center differential when I first got it. It was good to go. The bearings were dialed right in and we got it mounted in the new motor mount. So we're not gonna mess with that either. We're just gonna do the installation on that. If you wanna know how the differentials are done, check out Differentials 101. It's in the 101 playlist, and I will leave a link in the description down below for that video. That should walk you through the differentials and what you need to know about how to work on those. Beside that, we're gonna go ahead and swap everything from one chassis to the new one, and of course, we're gonna use the Outcast EXB chassis on this car now, and it is the same length. We did set them up side by side, and it is the same chassis that's in it, except the one that's in it is the stock chassis made of the cheap aluminum. So we're gonna upgrade that, and we're gonna go ahead and get all the new parts installed and get this thing rolling and ready to go. In the next video, we'll set the thing up, we'll take it to the track, and we'll run it against the Mojaves, the Centon 3S, the Slash, and whatever else we can get out there to see how it performs. It will have the stock running gear. It'll have the 2050 motor in it. It'll have the 150 amp speed control. And we're going to put an 18 tooth pinion in it to see how it holds up. So let's get on the bench. Check this out. Okay, first thing we want to do is we're going to detach the stuff from the front end. So let's start with the steering linkages, and that's the screws that hold the servo saver and steering rack in place. We're going to go ahead and back those out, and then we're going to detach the differential housing. You know, this is, this is pretty easy going, and I know I'm using a power gun here, but real slow and easy does the job. Um, it is plastic, and if you overdrive these screws, pulling them out real fast, you can heat the plastic up and then they'll have trouble holding on later. So real slow on this. These are a little tight and so we're going to back those off by hand here. And then slowly, once we get them broke, we're going to back each one out. These two will actually allow you to remove the diff. Just like that. So it comes off as a unit. Go ahead and inspect your differential ring. Now, as you can see, I've already put some lubrication in there, so we don't have to mess with that on this. Now, this hinge pinch brace on the back, this needs to come off because we have an aluminum one to replace it with, and this one fails, you know. This position in the car seems to fail a lot in the Typhons and whatnot in the Cratons, so we're just gonna switch it over for a hot racing one real quick here. And this is it and it's designed for this specific location. So we'll put it in place and you have to work it in a little bit because you know if you're not using all brand new stuff, you might have a little resistance. Once it's in place, run these two screws in and it's still into plastic, so nice and easy. Beautiful. And of course, torque them down by hand. Never run things down all the way with the power tool. And I'll say that a few times through the build here. Fit it to the chassis and put the two small ones back in place and grab that aluminum block we just mounted. That'll hold everything lined up and in place so that you can get all the rest of the screws in and it'll keep the differential housing from falling off. That also allows us to put this on and that's the RPM bumper. 
And when I flipped it over, if you notice, it had dimples. Those go into the countersunk area on the chassis and it keeps everything from moving, so it holds it in place. This bumper is really well designed by RPM and I haven't had any issues with it using these. Nice. So there you go. That's the front end. Everything's moving nice and freely. So now we can go ahead and hook up the servo saver and, of course, the steering rack mount. Run those down, snug them up a little bit by hand, make sure that they won't come loose. Now we're on to the rear end, and we've only got a couple of screws holding this one in place. That's because this one had a rear bumper on it, and we had to remove it. So fit it to the new chassis, and you see how the block goes through the hole, and just get a couple of these in there to hold it down, and we'll go ahead and tighten them up, but we're going to put that rear bumper back on it later so we don't need to get too carried away with that. Let's move on to the servo mount and look at the mounting. That is a beautiful mount that goes in there. It's nice, sturdy, well designed and a lot of them are really good. This one's a one piece unit. So there's four screws there and this is into aluminum so we can run them in pretty good with this. Speed's not really an issue and then of course torque them by hand which is our norm on building. That installed. Let's get the drive lines in place for the center. And there's the new motor mount and of course that's got the center differential in it as well. Line it up with the drive lines, get your holes in place and get one started. I like the center one here just to get everything lined up. And then we'll put the two in on the aluminum first so don't forget a little Loctite and we'll run those down in and don't overdo it with the Loctite just a little bit usually works on this so I like to use just a little anyway we'll go ahead and get the Loctite down and snug them get everything torqued down good the front two here go into plastic so Loctite is not necessary one and two and of course, when you torque these down, you're in plastic, so snug does the job, guys. Don't overdo it. Perfect. Check everything. Everything's moving nice and freely, smooth, no issues. Now let's move on to the battery tray and radio box. Now this has some inset holes here, and it'll snap right into place when you get those holes lined up. And then there should be four screws here that'll hold the tray in place but there's actually one more screw that goes in under the radio box. So there's a total of five here. Run those down. And these are small screws, so don't torque them very much. Just enough to get them down snug. You don't want to go crazy with these little tiny screws. They pull the threads out way too easily. There we go. Nice. Now that's installed. It's starting to take shape now. So let's go ahead and back out this one screw here, and this is so we can get our rear brace in place. Now, we want to keep those spacers in the right order there, and then get it, get it down in there. Slide it right through, put the other spacer back in place, get it to run through, and then, of course, tighten it up. Now this, it does go into a nut on that side, so you can run it down a little bit, but those power guns are strong enough to destroy plastic, so don't over tighten it there either. And then you've got the front that goes through the chassis. Line it up. There we go. Tighten it down. Torque it by hand. And the rear brace is in place. Look at that. So let's do the same thing for the front now. Now this one mounts down through the header plate there. So that top plate, there's two holes. I like to go on the outside one, give it a little more space away from the drive axle there. Snug that one down a little bit. Leave it loose enough that you can move it so you can get everything lined up on this one. That one with just a dab of Loctite, snug it down. And then tighten the front one. Beautiful. And that's really all there is to those. Now we need to mount the speed control down to the mounting plate and there's two screws, one on each side. And since this is designed to go in that car, it's really simple. One and 
two. Beautiful. There we go. And then this indexes on the leg of that servo mount, so it'll slide right around it. You can feel it pop in there. Get everything kind of out of the way so that we can get our bottom screws in, line up the holes, and put all of the screws in for that piece. And torque them again by hand. Beautiful. I really do enjoy working on these RC cars. It's so relaxing. You know, it, it's actually a bit more hectic when you're doing it with the cameras and stuff. When I just need to unwind, I go down and work on these things just to spend some time. It's really peaceful. You can get the radio going. It's just a really nice time. Now, these two plates, there's one in the front, one in the back, and those plates right there are to hold the sway bars in place, and they're the hot racing caps. The plastic ones, they come with the cars work really well, but these aluminum ones allow you a little more control over adjusting how loose you want that torsion rod in there to be. So that's why I got those. Plus, I bought them for one of the other cars. I just had them on the shelf, so I decided to throw them on this car. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Now we need to set up the motor. So we have the motor plate that came out of this bracket here. And just check it for alignment. You want those wires off the top, so we're going to set it up this direction. You can put them on in multiple directions, but I like to have those uh, three leads coming off the motor right on the top. So we'll run that down nice and easy. Just a little, You don't want to go crazy with the Loctite on this, but you do want to get some on there to hold it in place. Of course, there's the grub screw for the new pinion. We'll run that in. And then we'll run it down and set that up and snug it in good. There we go, just like that. A little bit of spacing away from the plate. That's usually where it lines up. We'll check it once we get it in the car. Nice. Slides right in. See how convenient that was? And it's just those two screws in the top that hold it in place. So yeah, it's really simple. That's what I like about this motor mount assembly. It's just, they hold really well but they actually work very good. Now, of course, we need just a little bit of space between the spur gear and the pinion, and then snug it down. The wires here are color-coded since it came as a unit, so we should be able to just go ahead and connect them color by color. Sometimes when things run backwards, you need to rotate one or two or a couple of those, but most of the time with this kind of system, you just match up the colors. Let's get those side panels in place now one screw in there just to hold it and then we'll run the rest of them in. Beautiful. I just love seeing these things come together. Take a big pile of parts and turn it into something impressive. That's so nice. Look at that. Taking shape. Getting real close now. Rear suspension, front suspension, all nice, free, no binding. Beautiful. Now let's go ahead and connect that thrust rod that hooks up to the servo saver. Get that torque down. Nice. And that's working pretty good too. So let's put that rear bumper assembly in place. So we'll back out these two temporaries and we'll work these down nice and easy. There we go. Run each one down, torque it good. Beautiful. All the threads feel good. Nice. Now this is a two-part bumper here. So the second part is a flap that goes on the top and you screw it down and they never do actually stay together. It's two pieces, but when you impact, that top piece takes up a lot of 
that the inertia. So it's a really cool design. I'll be interested to see how well it works on this car. There we go. Now we need to get the on off switch mounted and on that particular um, speed control mount there is a spot to mount that very unit. Now let's fish the leads through from both the speed control and the servo. Get them out of the way there. Just like that. And let's dig into the radio box. Now this is a pretty good sized box and you can get a pretty decent sized receiver in there. I picked this one because I have an extra six channel laying around so we're going to go ahead and stick that in it and see how that works. I'm not really sure I'm going to need to use the AVC that's in it but the receiver is an extra that I have laying here in this in the studio so we're going to put this one in it for now. Center it up and try and give yourself room on the side for your wiring and stick it down. And we're just using regular two-sided tape here. There we go. Now there's a gasket here. That's a U-shaped gasket and you have to raise it up some so you can get these wires down into it before you push it back down and that's what allows it to be more or less watertight. It's not truly watertight guys but it is very water resistant you know it's just a piece of foam with some wires going through so they it can take water it'll take puddles and that type of thing but if you submerge it your receiver is going to get wet so it looks just like that with it all pushed down in place now let's connect each of the channels and on this receiver it's marked for you know throttle and steering so it makes it a lot easier now coil up your wires when you get that, make sure you're plugged in good and then coil up your wires and set them in alongside the receiver. Don't put them over the top if you can help it because there's a button on top that we're going to use to sync this. So you want to sort of make a nice little bundle of them off to the side. Get down in there. Just like so. Now, we need to get this up and push the button on the receiver and with a battery connected, turn it on. See how it's flashing? That's the way it's supposed to. Now, push the sync button on the radio, turn the power on, and that flashing stops so that you can start doing all of your assessment. Now, you got to pull the trigger, go to brakes, you got to turn left, you got to turn right, and then give it a second. And now everything works. And these are usually just that simple to do. Don't forget to turn them off as soon as you get it synced, like so, so it'll save the settings. With that working properly, let's fish in the antenna and get that cap on nice and snug and we'll fix it down. That wasn't so hard. I've had some difficult radios in my day, but this system here is really nice to work with. Now we're going to find out if that body brace actually fits. And it does seem to sit over that just about right, get some clearance. And it slid right in like it's supposed to. Excellent. So it's nice to know the dimensions on the two are really close. It looks good. We won't know for sure until we go to put the body on. Let's go ahead and install the tires and wheels. And I'm not rattling it down with the gun. I'm just getting it down close. We'll tighten everything by hand when we're done here. Here we go. Nice. Those are some good looking tires, I have to say. They really do look good. I was hoping they would. And then, of course, tighten these, torque them by hand, as always. Now, will that body go on there? Let's find out. Beautiful.
Okay guys, there you go. That's the restoration build for the Centon 6S from Armin. Now, like I said, they don't produce this car anymore. That's why we had to buy a basket case and rebuild it from basically scratch. The upside is the differentials were getting it and they're aftermarket with the hot racing diffs and now it has all three front, rear and center all hot racing and I checked them out pretty good and they're in good shape. Also, whoever owned this did some pretty good maintenance to the parts because the bearings were all still good to go. I did buy a bearing kit, but until they fail, or at least one or two of them fails, I'm not going to swap those over as of yet. Right now it has the stock bearing kit in it. This is the only body I could find for this, and it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And inside here, this is what's cool here. Now, we were able to go ahead and turn it into an EXB class for this. It's got the chassis, it's got the aluminum braces here. You know, a lot of the stuff that they put in the EXBs is incorporated into this, so it's tougher than the stock one would be. And it does have a 35 kilogram servo in here with hot racing bell cranks. It also has the hot racing arm for the servo. So that's all modified as well. It does have the stock 150 Spectrum speed control, the 2050 motor in it with an 18 tooth gear, and it's got the upgraded battery box and radio box, which gives it a little more protection to the batteries because it comes up on the side and all the way across the front. So when you hit hard, the batteries have a bulkhead to bump into, which makes them, well, it makes it less dangerous for the batteries because if you rupture one it can burn the car to the ground so other than that everything else in it is pretty stock it does have the rpm front bumper on it and i use these on most of my armas because these they flex but they're really durable and rarely do they ever break and it does have a t-bone racing rear wheelie bar bumper setup which is pretty nice as well does have the Duratrax tires and wheels, and this is designed for this particular type of car. So they went right on with no modifications. Now, we've got the Centon 6S up and ready. We synced the radio, and you saw that. Everything works just like it's supposed to. When I'm done with this segment, you're gonna get the rev test to see how things look. Check this out. So that's the rev test and as you can tell the rear tires are a little bit out of balance which at that speed you could see them vibrating back and forth so we were only able to get about three quarter throttle on that with that gearing it'll go a little bit faster than that and i just really didn't want to rupture one and tear the body up so we kept it at about three quarter throttle you know these things are awesome as far as that goes it's built on the typhon chassis so that means that the typhons generally handle really awesome on the ground so I would assume this one's gonna do the same thing. We won't know really until we get into the third video in the series where we're gonna actually take it out to the track and test it as soon as the weather allows. Right now we still have snow on the ground so it wouldn't be a fair test to the car. So it's gonna sit on the shelf for a couple of videos guys and then we'll get it out when the snow's gone so we can actually put a decent test to it. And we were talking about this here at the studio and yes, we're gonna run it against the Mojave, we're gonna run it against the 3S, but we're also gonna throw the UDR in the mix to be fair, and we're gonna get a slash in there. I've got a buddy that's got one that he thinks a lot of his slash and I'm really happy he likes it. We'll bring it out and see how that competes as well. He's put a lot of parts into that and it should be a really cool test. Now with the DX3 radio in there, syncing was a snap. All you gotta do is hold down the button on the receiver, push the power button, it'll go into blink mode on the transmitter, hold down the sync button and push the, the power button, it'll come on and it'll sort of see it. That blinking will stop in the car. Then you pull the throttle, let off, it'll blink, brakes, let off, it'll blink, left, center, it'll blink, right, center, it'll blink. Let it sit for a second and then test it. Then make sure you turn everything off. Turn off the car, turn off the transmitter to save the settings and we were up and running just like that and it was really awesome it went together really good and all the endpoints seemed to hit exactly right now this one has a gyro but we do have it turned off um, we may test it but it's such a short wheelbase i don't know that the gyro is going to be necessary but if we want to use it it is in there that being said this really isn't a review type of video and neither will the third one as far as that goes this is simply 
restoring a piece of Armas history. Now, this is the precursor to the Mojave. It is a, uh, basically it's their first shot, as far as I know, in the success arena to make a short course truck. And I think they knocked it out of the park. Of course, with all the upgrades and things in it, we're not gonna know how well it performs until we get it out on the track. Still, if you have one of these cars and you're thinking of selling it, maybe this video will convince you to hang on to it just a little longer because like I said, you can't get this anymore. Remember guys, this is only video two of three and we will get out there and run the other one as soon as the weather permits. But hey, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It's awesome when you do. And don't forget that notification bell to stay informed of upcoming videos, especially the third one in the series for this one. This has been a lot of fun to make this video. I really do enjoy the wrenching and the guys around here don't mind doing the extra work because when you do a wrenching video like this, just the editing sequence takes a good long time to do to make it so it's something you can understand and roll through without getting like convoluted and lost in the series. This is really cool when we get to do these types of things and you know, we really enjoy the wrenching. It's not just something we say, it's a real thing. This is more of the hobby for us than pulling the trigger. We like modifying things. We like making things different than they are when they come out of the box. But here on the channel, we keep things mostly stock because the people we aim this at are the newcomers to the hobby. People who will buy something out of the box and want to know what it's capable of. That's what we gear ourselves towards. But once in a while, we get to do a special one like this. They can't go buy one anyway, so we're going to see what the stock running gear will do, but you modify the heck out of the car just to see how tough you can make it. That's the fun part. Hey guys, if you have any of these cars, the Centon 6S, if you've done any modifications that we missed in this video, if you have any advice you can give others, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying, keep wrenching guys.